Hey, and we are live with Brian from Deloitte. So Brian Dean is a strategy and analytics consultant for a big four consulting firm, Deloitte. Is that did I get all that right? Yes, that's right. That's correct. Thanks for thanks for joining me today, Brian. I know we started a little bit late. Uh, for those in the crowd, I, I have the honor of uh, teaching the Navy and Marine Corps flag and general officer course uh, a little bit of LinkedIn. And it's always exciting to get to share that with those senior leaders. Uh, but let's get to the topic at hand. So, Brian, um, I guess, you know, this is kind of crazy. What is Deloitte? <laughs> so Deloitte, I, I guess the easiest way to explain this too, they are a professional services firm. And so what that means is that they provide services to companies, organizations, the government, um, and really understand ways they can improve the organization at their core and all different ways that they operate. So, but not, so Deloitte is not just a professional services firm, right? Like you guys are huge, right? Over yeah. 300,000, I think, employees? In the U.S., yeah. Wow. So over 300,000 employees, one of the big four consulting firms. So it's really one of the, one of the biggest names out there, really, when it comes to consulting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big name and um, it's a massive firm, but I think um, me specifically, I'm in the consulting practice mm -hmm. and um, consulting is a great, a great field to be in because you are working um, directly with clients and um, massive amounts of teammates mm -hmm. to really solve some kind of complex issue that the organization is facing. And I'm specifically in the government sector. So awesome. you're working with a lot of government clients who are extremely dedicated to their mission and so you get to come on board and learn about everything they're doing, how they're operating, and how you can really add value to either improve what they're doing, mm -hmm. um, change it, innovate, et cetera. And um, yeah, Deloitte's massive, but I must say they make it feel really, really small. And they do a good job at that because you have that really great team dynamic and um, they make sure you're very connected. I, and for, for everybody, so everybody knows I was at EY and EY and Deloitte are frenemies. <laughs> uh, in a lot of ways, but uh, I'm also a graduate of the Deloitte Core program. And so you guys really, um, when I was transitioning, put together an amazing program uh, to help me with that. So I'm a fan of Deloitte. I can say that now uh, as well. But Deloitte is a really prestigious firm. It's not a staff org organization. So it's not like your typical contracting where like you get hired to do the same job you did while you were in the service. So how did you get to Deloitte? Yeah, so my, my path to Deloitte is, I guess, a little bit non-traditional. And um, I definitely pride myself on that. Um, so right after high school, I pretty much got involved with um, the world of EMS. And I became a paramedic um, pretty much right after. Um, worked that job for about five years. And then eventually realized I needed something different. I needed a change. Um, and luckily, um, during that time, I met my now wife and she said, hey, you should go back to school. Um, I thought, well, how the hell am I going to go back to school? You know, what do I know? And I knew nothing about college. My parents never went to college. So it wasn't something that was kind of groomed in me. And um, long story short, I decided that I should go back. Mm -hmm. um, the hard part of doing that was getting out of that realm, those skills, no matter how amazing I thought they were and the situations you're in that are difficult they don't translate to a civilian workforce. I mean, getting out of that field, the stuff I was doing, I couldn't be a bartender. Right. You know, there was barely could be a server in a restaurant and that was a hard transition. Long story short, I did go back to school uh -huh. um, and I just, I fell in love with it. Um, I loved academia. I went to UCLA for my undergrad. Wow. And then, um, yeah, this is the, the fun part. I did my master's at USC. So every time I say that, people are like, what are you doing? You're going to UCLA and USC? Yeah, but you kind of have that Southern California look to you, <laughs> so I can see it. Yeah, and I did that in a good way. Yeah, it worked out. But um, I got really engaged with the veteran community when I was at UCLA, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a huge passion of mine, um, being in that world. And they kind of took me in as their own, and I did a lot of program development while I was there, mm -hmm. and met some amazing people um, in the veteran world, and it just really took my heart. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to USC to do my master's in public policy, I really had this idea in mind to 
have some kind of large scale change in the veteran community. Um, and so that was really driving me moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so I did some internships. I did a lot of internships actually, and um, some fellowships um, in the government world. And um, I was very passionate about serving homeless veterans. Um, that was really, really big in my heart. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to work at an agency that um, does that. I did a fellowship there. And um, I loved the mission they were doing and I loved the work that they were trying to accomplish. And there was a desire in me to know, like, how can we keep scaling this? How can we Mm. serve this mission even higher? Um, There were some Deloitte folks that came to USC one day doing recruiting, and they were all just amazing, sharp, um, extremely dedicated. And I thought, how do I be that? Um, At the time, I had no clue. And um, I think this kind of builds into what you're doing as well, Mike, with these chats and your mission, because through my whole journey, I I didn't have the idea of what networking was. I didn't didn't know how. And I kind of had this, I'm not this gifted, talented, smart human, so that I have to have something else. And throughout my whole transition, it was, who can I talk to? Who can I get in front of and say, hey, I'm just passionate. I'm I'm ready to run. That's it. And that's kind of what I did to eventually um, get to Deloitte was to show them I'm I'm genuine and passionate and hungry. And um, I got a lot to grow but I promise I'll do it. And um, that just works. And you're obviously humble because uh, you went to UCLA and USC. So that I'm not a smart guy comment. <laughs> but really, like you don't just, you know, skate through UCLA and USC for grad school. Um, it takes a lot of work and, and, and uh, you know, effort and a little bit of talent there. So I give you that, but no, that makes a lot of sense. So would you would you say that your time in, you know, working with the homeless organization and thinking about scaling support was what really kind of trampolined you in the directions of Deloitte when they started talking about how, what they do, helping organizations scale and everything else like that? Yeah, I think it definitely did. And um, I think you, you work in a lot of government agencies and even the one we're in now and you understand that some of the challenges they have to encounter are just so massive and so complex and so difficult. And um, there's just barriers to even just how, how government is able to operate. And um, so now being in the position I'm at, um, I remember chatting with some of the Deloitte folks saying, this is what I'm passionate about. And I, I just want to be in a world where you feel that kind of unconstrained ability to say, I want to do something amazing. How are we doing it? Yeah. And I think, I think that's the fun part about being in the world of consulting is because you're around so many people who are so hungry and passionate and driven. And, you know, my hundred percent, um, it's really, it feels like it's sometimes average at a place like Deloitte because there's people who do always doing 110 and it's really amazing. And it feels great to be around it. I, I, I felt the same way, and I, I to this day, my my a lot of my peers ran circles around me at the, at, at EY. So, uh, and and you know, I had a few things I was good at, and you know, the rest of it, I was just playing catch up. But that's a good. Did you say what your degrees were in? Yeah. So my my undergraduate degree was um, political science, public affairs, and then my master's was public policy. And now you're a strategy and analytics. <laughs> yeah. Consulting at Deloitte. Yeah. So, so Deloitte comes, they do their, their on-campus event. You talk to them and you're like, oh my God, like this is what I want to do. And I, I love what you said about how you can get involved in the projects that matter to you and you could bring all these resources to bear. How did you end up with strategy and analytics? So the, the way that we were recruited out of our out of my master's was they kind of put you into that bucket based off of your skill sets. Mm-hmm. And experience. So they were immediately recruiting for, um, at the time, it was strategy and operations. Mm-hmm. And um, those buckets kind of change year to year, you know. Um, long story short, it's it's in that realm of strategy, operating, you know. And I got placed in analytics, I think, also, too, just because my program, um, the MPP, is like a heavier quantitative focus. Mm. And so a lot of the strategy analytics work is definitely revolves around how can you apply um, data and data insights and, and leverage data analysis to then strategically inform um, decisions. 
So, um, yeah, I was really filling a gap in, in my knowledge by doing the MPP because I didn't have a lot of those hard quantitative skills. And so it was great to, to gain those and then be able to elevate that to where I'm at now. Yeah, I didn't, and I didn't know that about that degree. So that makes a lot of sense then. And I will say that strategy and operations uh, sounds more like for someone with an EMS background, a military background, and 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 um, you know the degrees you chose. Now it makes a lot more sense. And and I do see the analytics piece. So by the way, Kenneth, did you see what Kenneth said? Kenneth Bond. <laughs> Let me take a look. I work with Ken. Yeah. Yep. No, that's amazing. I, I work with Ken. Um, he's one of the vets at Deloitte and he's, he's on a, uh, kind of like ancillary team to me. And, um, he's, he's just been amazing for me as well. He's a, he's kind of a mentor to almost everyone there. And, um, yeah, I uh, just, another amazing human to be with. I, I mean, I, so I know you guys have an incredible veteran program, so that goes without saying, and uh, it looks like Ken's telling people find someone at Deloitte and ask for an informational interview. That's a great way to get in the door. So, but I don't want to go into just getting into Deloitte. So strategy and analytics, strategy and analytics. What, what do you do? <laughs> do you so do? They, and don't give clients. I don't want to go into clients, specific yeah. clients or whatever, but like what kind of, can you give me an example of a problem you guys have solved or are solving or, or would solve? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the, um, and I mean, I can say I'm, I'm working for my client is the VA okay. um, and I'm extremely happy that it is because I'm very passionate about working for um, veterans in that world. And um, long story short, VA is doing everything they can to overhaul a lot of their IT systems. Yep. And so um, I'm in that sphere working for, for that mission. And specifically, I'm in organizational change management, customer experience, so a lot of what I'm doing the day to day, um, I'm specifically on a data team and our whole job is really understanding who is going to be impacted by this massive change that is happening mm -hmm. for thousands of employees at yeah. the VA. How are we going to understand who they are, where they're located, all of these other factors to then collect that information and know well, what is the impact? How does this change their work? How does this change their culture? People need training. Obviously, a lot goes into it. Yeah. So a lot of the day-to-day -day is really understanding how to collect that information so you have valid data, mm -hmm. how to manage it, how to give it to the right people, how to analyze it. And inevitably, some of our main products are then putting those into some kind of dashboard form, mm -hmm. be it Tableau, Power BI, mm -hmm. to then dispense that that insight to then inform people across Deloitte, the client, et cetera, of, hey, this is this is the impact of what's going on. Um, these are next steps we should then take to either mitigate these impacts or to best prepare folks yeah. for what's happening. And then you track the progress as these things are implemented along the way, correct? Yeah, we'll definitely track the progress along the way. Uh, do you guys... Do you, does that mean you do a lot of interview of like VA employees to find out how it would impact them? Uh, I mean, so I guess that's a yes, right? <laughs> yeah, you, there's there's definitely a lot of outreach, um, tons of it, because you have to go to different um, stations, um, points of contact to understand, hey, your your office might be impacted. Um, how can we how can we understand what users within your realm are are going to be hit? So. There's tons of interviews, tons of discussions, um, tons of back and forth, and it's not an easy task. So a lot of the times it's, you know, you're exchanging a lot of information, a lot of different um, data points. So it's it's nonstop iterative, um, nonstop collaborative. Do you enjoy it? I really enjoy it. And I think there's there's plenty of days like any job where it's exhausting, it's hard, you're stressed. Um, maybe there's issues that you don't know how to solve right away. But I think the best part about being where I'm at is there are folks like Ken, my entire team I'm with, or I've come up against barriers and I've said, Hey, I've made a mistake, or I don't know how to do this right away. And more often than not, my team leader will tell me we're a team. So we're going to solve this together. Um, this is how we're going to move forward. 
let's just do it. And um, there's something in that. There's a resiliency factor in that, that um, it's calming and it's also inspiring to know there is challenges all the time. I don't know the answer immediately, but we can figure it out together. So it's really cool. No, I love that. So, uh, and then do you get to learn about different tools and solutions and capabilities in this larger practice on a regular basis? Yeah, that's what Deloitte's really good about too, is they're constantly, um, they're constantly letting you know of opportunities to upskill, learn different softwares, technologies, and um, you can definitely get overwhelmed with it because it's it's a lot that they push out to you. And um, I think it's that's part of knowing yourself too and what what really energizes you. You know, Deloitte says, um, it doesn't matter if you're good at something, you might not be happy doing it. And um, so there's a, there's a realm for me too. Of, I enjoy a lot of the data work, but I've been explicitly honest. You know, I don't want to spend my life and be that person who's in, who's in Python, who's in R, I don't find enjoyment of that. Right. But I love the data visualization stuff. I love using Tableau and learning more. And so you got to find that good balance to know um, what you're passionate about and, and you know, what level you can keep going up to. Yeah, no, I can see that. And I, I think when you're in an organization that size, those opportunities are there if you're networking and looking for them. I can also see how you could be overwhelmed by uh, all the communications and opportunities. I, I remember uh, early my first couple of months at EY going to my peer mentor and saying, Jeremy, what, how, how do you do all this stuff? And he's like, oh, you don't. There's no way you could do all yeah. that stuff. You <laughs> that could do some of it. And, and you know, you've got to pick and choose and manage your own schedule, uh, you know, to, to learn the things that you need to to succeed. So, uh, you, you kind of make me smile when you're like, you can't do it all. You can get overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, so let's get to you. I know, I know we've got a hard stop at, uh, at one. So let's talk about, you, you know, your day as a consultant, you know, so how does that kind of look for you? Like what, what does a typical day look like? So a, a typical day, I think, um, and this varies widely across different teams and different people, but at least for me, um, we operate in what's called like an agile scrum framework. So you have, you have moments where you're doing intense work, building towards something. Um, and you have a meeting every day that kind of starts your day. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's how you get set up. So pretty much every day in the morning, we have a meeting with my team and we talk about what did we do the day before? What are we doing today? And are there any impediments to you completing this work? And I think what's, what's great about that is, I don't operate well in, in uh, like ambiguous situations when things are very fuzzy and unclear. I love structure. I love knowing exactly where we're going. And so starting the day off with that meeting is really great to know like, hey, I've been doing this. This is what I plan to do. And this is an issue. I need help with this. Um, so I feel like that's a standard day is starting out like that. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, you might have multiple meetings with um, your teammates, clients, whatever it is, discussing some aspect of your work. Um, and the meetings definitely can take up a bulk of your time. And so I think part of a day in a consultant world is knowing how to prioritize those kind of gap moments to really kind of have your head down and get some work done, which is the gap moments are those moments when you don't have meetings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gap moments with no meetings to know, like I have tons of work to do and, and push out some deliverable or some work product. And so, um, I'd say that's a typical day. It's speckled in with meetings, clients, teammates, learning discussions, and um, kind of head down moments when you're like, do not disturb getting work done. So uh, that means it's nine to five, basically with an hour and a half lunch. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, it's like, it's an hour and a half. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, work from home too. I feel like it's changed everyone where you're kind of half and half eating lunch at your desk, but Deloitte's been extremely supportive of, of letting folks know this is very difficult. Take your time, make sure you have time set aside for yourself. And so for sure it's nine to five. Some days it's a little bit longer and that's totally fine. You have extra stuff to get done. Um, and you're also doing beyond your project work, some initiative work, which is kind of like a passion project. Um, and that might take a few extra hours or whatever it is, but 
that's that's pretty standard. Uh, and I think you just had a good point there. You know, beyond your project work, so your project work, the expectation is you're full time on that project or a combination of projects, right? Yeah. So that's a forty hour, uh, forty hours of billable work. So um, what happens when that project's done? Um, so when the project is done. Um, you normally know kind of how long your project timeline is, or you can hop off whenever you want. Right. But when the project's done, then you have to essentially, hopefully, have been networking to find another project. And that's, I think, the weirdest part about consulting is that you're not showing up every single day working for necessarily a company. You're showing up every day working for a client. And once that contract is done, um, then you can go to another job. And that's part of the exciting part is you can work for someone else um, and be versatile. But yeah, um, you got a network. You have yeah. people, of course, I deploy dedicated to helping you find another project, which is great. But I think networking is the best way to know, like I'm really passionate about this. Um, I'm gonna try that next. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a great point. I, and, and I know that, you know, your contract ends, they don't just like cut you. You know, you've got time on the bench that you can network and find other ways that they can get your utilization up. So that's a great point. But so you've got your project work. Uh, so when you talk about the other stuff, what is the other stuff? Like what kind of stuff aside from your normal billable work? Yeah. So aside from normal billable, you have um, initiative work is what they call it. And um, you can also do um, business development, like helping um, get more contracts with clients and getting involved in that world. But the initiative work is something that really did draw me to Deloitte. And that's basically them saying outside of your client work, what are you passionate about? What are you into? Let's get you involved in that. And there's teams of people doing all sorts of initiative work. Um, I was getting more involved one with um, Ken who commented and he's, he's huge on getting veteran resumes, you know, reviewing veteran resumes, getting those things polished up and cleaned up so they can transition to the workforce the best they can. That's a job. Um, that's something that he's leading right now and has other people that are leading it as well. And so you can do your client work, but when you have those kind of passion projects on the side, it's nice to know like, oh, today was rough for just my normal job, but maybe at the end of the day you go, oh, I'm doing something that this is really gets me going. This fuels yeah. my fire. So it's yeah. fun to do that. And that also builds relationships. So it gets, allows you to do some community service, some volunteer stuff, uh, following your passions, but it also builds relationships within the firm as well, yeah. right? Yeah, no, I love it. So we're getting close to the the, the point here. I, I, don't want, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, I guess a couple, couple questions here. So one, what would you recommend for any transitioning service member or recent veteran that wants to join or work for a firm like Deloitte? This is just an insanely hard question. I think I, I say it all. The, <laughs> I say it all the time. When I first got recruited, I reached out to my recruiter um, a couple months later, and I said, "Hey, thanks for everything you did." And um, I said, "Why, you know, why did you pick me?" Because I, you meet so many people there that are just amazing and smart and, and hyper intelligent. And I said, "I feel like half of it was just luck." <laughs> and um, she goes, "No, it's not. It wasn't that." And she's like. You are very, very genuine and you are extremely passionate. And we saw that. And um, those are the kind of people we want. And I think the benefit of having anyone in that military associated world, spouses, vets, whatever it is, they understand that idea of team, loyalty, mm -hmm. hard work in the face of adversity. And so I'd say if you are transitioning or in that realm, be vulnerable with with people that you're, that you're talking to and get yourself in front of as many people as you can. And just simply say that I'm hungry. I want this. I'm passionate about X. I don't have all the pieces yet. And that's, I don't care. I, I'm, I want to find those. And I think more often than not, it's, it's just so naturally attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, people hear that and they just, they just want to help. They want to get involved. And I don't think that changes throughout your entire career because I'm still doing it now. I, I think that's a that's a fairly 
a unique answer, and I like it when I think about it in the framework of, of what I've heard before and what I understand of the big four. So, uh, I mean, I think it still comes down to relationships, right? So get to know people at Deloitte yeah. and don't come to the relationship saying, I know I can do this. Come to them saying, you know, I like these things and I would love to join the Deloitte team and let them help guide you through the opportunities because that's what it really comes down to. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's, I think that's, you know, really that's a, that's, that's a great way of putting it, but it still comes down to, you gotta, you've got to, um, you've got to talk to people. You should be talking to people at Deloitte. Uh, yeah. The other piece of this, I think you hit on it as well is that when you're talking about consultants, so much of it is building relationships, right? Especially as you start getting into the manager, senior manager, you know, specialist roles, um, director, partner. It's all about relationships and trust. Yes. And you need that to be able to build new business. And uh, there's, you know, a lot of the same things that like an EY, a Deloitte, a KPMG, you know, uh, PwC, Guidehouse, they, they do a lot of the same things. But at the end of the day, if they really like and trust Brian, then they're going to want Brian to come in and do it. So um, yeah. I think that you just hit – it was a really good answer. Thank you. Maybe think about it. All right, second question, uh, if we can wrap it up on this one. If somebody has questions about Deloitte uh, or is interested in Deloitte and they're watching this, like I saw uh, Jason, I think it's Rang or Rang, Rango, uh, says he's already in phase two of a change management application for Deloitte. If someone's interested in Deloitte, could they reach out to you on LinkedIn and, and maybe get a phone call or something or get into your veteran network? Yeah, I'd be more than happy to um, do any phone chats, anything like that. And I could also promise to, if, if anyone reaches out, um, I will definitely connect you with someone else because as much as I know, there's someone else that knows something even more or has a different perspective. So um, I'm a huge advocate. People have done it for me along my path still are, I'd be, I would not be here without all these people helping me. So love to chat and also love to connect you to someone else who can just keep building and allow you to flourish and grow. Awesome. Well, Brian, I know you've got a meeting. Uh, everybody, this is not on Brian. It's on me for starting late. <laughs> so just throwing that out there, we would have probably been talking for another 10 minutes easy, but Brian, thank you so much for spending your, your lunchtime with us. And uh, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye.